Traveling with one bag can really boost your travel experience, give you more freedom and cheaper trips. I've been traveling with minimum baggage throughout the last 10 years because I was usually hiking during my trips, what has forced me quickly to pack efficiently. The thing is though, it's not for everyone, so that you can decide for yourself and also learn how to travel with one bag anywhere you want, I share an ultimate guide consisting of 5 chapters. Pros and cons of traveling with one bag? Is it for you? I'll describe what kind of travels are suitable and which are not for minimum luggage. In the third chapter I'll be speaking about choosing the right bag because that is essential to get started. In the fourth chapter, probably the most important one, will be about what I pack to conclude in the chapter 5 where I share my packing methods to get everything fitting into the backpack. So make sure to watch all 5 chapters as this knowledge will allow you to travel with one bag or if you do that already, improve your current packing methods. Chapter 1 Pros and Cons of Traveling with One Bag Only Starting with the pros First one is a broad one regarding everything that is going on in an airport. With a single backpack you are much more efficient when it comes to the check-in process which you can basically skip. If your backpack is not a huge one and also is not weighing above the limit, you'll be allowed to take it on board. If you stick with the video, you'll learn how to pack to not exceed the weight limit. After the flight, what puts a smile on my face is that right after going through the passport check, you can leave the airport. And that has two advantages. First of all, you save time. When I was traveling with additional luggage, for example when flying with my son, I had to wait for the luggage for an hour. But also, you must have heard so many times about the airlines losing luggage. That can ruin your whole trip, but with a single bag taken on board, there's no risk at all of losing your old belongings. Third flight advantage is the cost, which is lower when you don't have to check in additional luggage. So not only it's time that is being saved, but also money. Other reason to travel with one bag is that it gives you so much freedom and ease to travel wherever you want and whenever you want. You can easily take everything with you and get on a bus or train, go hiking or sightseeing, no bulky suitcase to carry around. And that factor is the most important one for me. I usually change places a lot and go hiking so the possibility to just put the baggage on my back makes traveling so much easier. Last pro is that traveling with minimum luggage makes you pack only what you will actually need. So if you have constraints on one baggage, it will definitely be lighter and smaller than when you could pack whatever comes to your mind. On the contrary, that can be seen as a negative, as you need to compromise on some things that you may want to take with you. And that leads us to the cons. First one, as mentioned, is just that you're limited with the space. For me it's not that important because I never felt like I had to take much more than I can pack into a backpack, but for some of you it might be crucial. Another thing is that if you travel with a suitcase and a small backpack, you won't hurt your back that much. Carrying a 10 kg backpack around can be really tiring, especially for your back, shoulders and waist. The third disadvantage of traveling with a backpack only is that some people just find suitcases better to pack into. You can organize and fold your clothes nicely and that prevents them from being wrinkled after you unpack them. It's a matter of preference. For me it was never an issue but probably suitcases are easier to pack. Although there are more and more backpacks now available where you can open them like a suitcase. The last one is that in a suitcase plus small backpack scenario you have the smaller backpack with you, which you can use on short sightseeing trips or anytime a bigger backpack would be too much, but the small one does perfectly well. This is why it is often advised to take a foldable backpack into your main backpack when traveling with one bag only. So there are quite many pros and cons. For me personally the advantages outrun the disadvantages, but depending on your preferences you can hopefully decide much better if this is actually something you want to try yourself. Chapter 2 to complete the decision-making process of traveling with one or multiple bags, I want to share a few scenarios for which one of those options might be better. So when would it be best to travel with one bag only? Moving a lot between places. If you travel around in the place you went to a lot, sleeping in different places, seeing many cities or other sites, it is much easier to travel with a single backpack. You just have everything with you, can easily take it wherever you want to go. That's why it's so popular among many travelers. It gives you the freedom of doing whatever you want and just grabbing the pack and seeing what you desire. 
And that is the other scenario which is a travel without a strict plan. I like to go to a new place without booking accommodation for the whole time I'm being there. I just decide on the go where I want to sleep and I just go there. With several suitcases or baggage pieces it would be impossible or it would be much more difficult and discouraging. And the last type of travel which I personally also do very often is a travel combined with hiking. As mentioned in the pros, if you move a lot, especially walking, you definitely want to keep the packing as minimal as possible. On the other hand, there are some travel scenarios where it's not needed to limit yourself with one pack only. The first one is when you're just going to one hotel and you stay there the whole time. Maybe just some daily short trips around. So this would be a classical holiday week in a warm place at the sea. You don't really need to have a backpack there, you usually have the luggage price included, you get to the hotel by bus, put your suitcase in your room and it just stays there until you leave. In this case you don't need to worry about taking too much stuff or having bulky luggage. Last scenario is traveling with kids, especially babies. Infants require so much more additional stuff and also you usually pack things that only might be needed, in contrary to going by yourself where you shouldn't be prepared for every situation. With a baby it's a different story and the additional things to take might require an additional suitcase. After the second chapter you should definitely be able to decide with a full overview on the pros and cons and the travel type you like to do what is best for you. But if you do want to travel with one bag what I really recommend you must see the next chapter where I'll be talking about choosing the right bag. This step is very important because I have seen so many disappointed travelers that had two big backpacks. I did it myself too at the beginning that it made the travel a disaster. On the other hand, you want to have a backpack that's not too small or uncomfortable. So here are my tips on choosing the perfect bag for you. There are several factors that you should look at. I list them from the most important to least important. The factors are size, comfort and others or additional features. Size. For every travel I would recommend a backpack of at least 30 liters of capacity, but I wouldn't go higher than 42 liters. That allows you to find a sweet spot where you can pack a lot of stuff, but still it's not a bulky backpack like the ones you can sometimes see sticking over people's heads. Two big backpacks is the most common mistake new one bag travelers would make, so make sure to not do the same. Second factor is comfort. This is another thing that is oftentimes underestimated. For me it's much more important than compartments, holders, pockets or any other features. If you travel with one bag only you'll most probably need to carry it for a long time and it may weigh a significant weight. What adds to comfort? The weight of the backpack itself. Usually the more expensive and smaller the backpack the less it weighs. But not necessarily, that's why you should always pay attention to this attribute when choosing a new backpack. I personally wouldn't go with more than 2 kilograms. Also the straps to help to release the force from your shoulders would add a lot to comfort to the backpack. For me a hip belt is a must have, preferably with a solid frame in the back that allows to put the majority of the weight on the hips instead of shoulders and back. Also the main strap lying on your shoulders must be comfortable and with foam, so that you can carry the backpack for several hours without pain. The last thing to look at when it comes to comfort is the material and technology that is used in the back of the pack. This will all be important after carrying the backpack for longer time. Not necessarily during the trip itself, but even going through the airport or finding the train station might take some time, so you want to give your body as much comfort as possible. Additional features. This is something of your preference, but it's definitely a plus if the backpack has some compartments. That makes it way easier to separate and store safely different things you want to bring with you. But not only that, oftentimes the backpack is accessible only from the top or if you open it up like a suitcase. Neither of those would be good for me. What I personally prefer is a trekking backpack open from top, from side and from the bottom. In many situations when you either want to quickly take out something from your backpack or it is just stored at the bottom of it, you have an easy access to it. The side zipper makes it so comfortable and doesn't require to take anything out to get each and everything from the backpack without the need to unpack it. Other features to look for are holders or, and straps. For me it's particularly important since I'm using the same backpack to go camping 
and in that circumstances there's just so much more to take with you that it's way easier to harness it with a strap to the backpack. So it's basically an extension of the backpack's capacity if you will and can be really helpful if you want to take some additional stuff with you. For my use and style of travel I have bought the Osprey Castrell 38 liters. You can get it for 170 to 100 bucks. So it's not very expensive for the quality you're getting and for me it checks all the boxes. Size, 38 liters is the perfect compromise and allows me to pack everything I need wherever I'd be going to. Comfort, in the size of about 38 liters there was a huge choice of backpacks but the comfort thing it really made me buy it. You shouldn't underestimate it either. It has a very comfortable hip belt and also what is very important a frame on the back which allows the weight to lay on the hips fully. Oftentimes the manufacturers add the hip belts, but without a solid frame, still the majority of the weight lays on your shoulder and back. There's also a mesh covered ridged foam that allows ventilation while keeping the load close to the body. This is all very important since I love to go trekking and hiking and that makes it so comfortable and allows to carry even 10 kilograms for many hours. I prefer trekking backpacks because they focus on comfort and lightweight, which are crucial for me. For you it might be different, so you just need to decide what suits you best. When it comes to additional features, it has an easy access from top, bottom and side. It has two main compartments and an additional large pocket on top. Also what makes it amazing are lots of additional straps that allow to attach really a lot of stuff. I went for weeks long travels with the whole camping gear with that backpack only. Of course, as mentioned, this suits best my traveling type, but having in mind what are the advantages of it, you can decide whether a similar one is right for you too, or which of the features would be relevant to select a perfect backpack for your one bag travel. Before we get into probably the most important chapter, which is what to pack, I wanted to highlight that you may want to like the video to let me know if this kind of topics is something you want to see more of, if you want to help the channel to grow, and you want to stay tuned for the upcoming materials, subscribe to the channel. Now getting back to traveling with one bag. What to pack and how to do it. Everyone has a different method and look on the stuff that need to be taken. It also depends on the place and time you'd be going to. That's why I'll share my personal experience and what I pack to a backpack and I'll split the stuff into two segments. First, core. Things that I would always take with me regardless of the weather conditions or activities I would be doing during my travel. And second category is others, which can be added depending on the mentioned factors. So starting with the core, first the clothes. Usually I'm packing 5 t-shirts plus one on me. I usually take 2 cotton t-shirts and 3 to 4 polyester sport t-shirts because they are lightweight, dry fast and are better for people that sweat. Then 1 pair of pants plus 1 on me. I take only comfy pants, usually trekking ones or tracksuit. I'm giving up fancy looks, I prefer comfort and lightweight. Then I would pack 4 to 5 pairs of socks and 4 to 5 underpants plus 1 each on me. For the underpants I also preferred sport ones for the same reasons as the t-shirts and for socks I usually also have sport socks or outdoor socks because they let the feet breathe better during longer walks. For the upper body I'd pack 1 sweatshirt plus 1 on me. It's good if it has some layer to keep you warm. I usually don't take classic cotton hoodies because they take a lot of space. Shoes. I usually only have the ones on me. Again, sport shoes or outdoor shoes are in my opinion better because you can go trekking, walks are so much more comfortable than in normal tennis shoes, vans or whatever. And they are just all-rounders. Additional stuff depending on the conditions and travel type. Usually I would also take an additional windproof soft shell. The one I have from Mammut takes almost no space but is awesome for windy situations. If I'm not sure if everywhere I'd be sleeping there will be towels available or I need one in case going for a swim, I take a tourist towel. Very small and quick dry. Jackets. If it might be a little bit colder, I have an Arcteryx jacket that is lightly isolated but very lightweight and takes very little space. For lower temperatures, I take a down jacket. It is really warm and compressible, so it fits nicely into the backpack. Usually I would also take a waterproof jacket. Mine is a Gore-Tex layer jacket from Arcteryx. A little bit more expensive, but no rain is scary for me thanks to that. Underwear. If it could get colder, I would also take a merino wool underwear set. It has several advantages. 
really warm, breathable, lightweight and doesn't take space. It also allows me not to take warmer pants because if it gets colder I just put the merino underneath and normal pants on that. Shorts. If I know the temperatures might be high I also have one or two pairs of shorts with me. Usually light and thin with some pockets which make it more practical. Swimming pants. Doesn't take any space so if there's a chance I'd be swimming I'd take that as well. So that's it when it comes to the clothes I might be packing depending on the travel I'm planning. Now continuing with other categories. Hygiene. I have one normal, rather small toiletry bag where I put all of my stuff in TSA compliant bottles. You can get them easily and it not only allows to travel with it on board but also just takes minimum space. I would still try to minimize the amount of things I'd be taking. Toothbrush, toothpaste, one for both of us traveling, two in one hair and body wash, so I need only one bottle. Ooh, yeah. Deodorant and a face wash. Other stuff. What I always have with me are wallet, passport, unless traveling within the EU, printed out insurance or entry tickets, obviously a smartphone and headphones. Especially for long flights, I would also take my Kindle reader and a crossword puzzle to kill time. Of course, to charge all of that, I'd need chargers, cables and adapters. Also, I always have a power bank, sometimes a solar one that is charged with solar power. I never take my laptop with me, what might be weird for some of you, as I've noticed everyone is taking it with them. But for me, travel is the perfect time to actually enjoy the moment and take a rest from the tech. Sure, if you need it, go ahead and take one. But you can watch Netflix also at home, it's cheaper. Usually I would also take my camera, but I take only one small lens so I can pack it into my pocket. GoPro plus batteries. I put those into a small camera bag so it doesn't get damaged, but also I could take it with me and have an easy access to it. Usually I might have some snacks with me, not only because I'm a cheapskate, but also you never really know or you don't want to bother if you land in your destination and all shops are closed. With that said, I can travel wherever for as long as needed. You have probably noticed that I have quite a lot of sport mountain outdoor trekking clothes and I really love it and I suggest for you to get some too maybe. The looks is not that good but again it's all about comfort and lightweight. The outdoor gear manufacturers emphasize mostly on that and these kind of clothes or shoes would usually do well in any circumstances. When it comes to packing, which is chapter 5, it's nothing fancy really. Having a lot of sport clothes allows me to fold it and not have wrinkles. I don't use cubes to pack, but I use just normal plastic bags. This may sound unprofessional, but this is something I've been doing since forever and it's easy, cheap, can be compressed and believe me, you can always use some spare plastic bags. I like to pack the underwear in a separate compartment and the rest in the main one. Cables, adapters, headphones, power bank and the reader fit nicely into the top pocket. What I actually would recommend is to have a separate packing cube for the electronics so that it doesn't get destroyed. I sometimes just pack it into a bubble bag but a better solution would be to have a more professional packing cube. As you see I could easily fit everything into the backpack, the core part being really easy. A small cheat I make, I need to confess about, is that I also take a fanny pack, but that allows me to have the most precious stuff and that I would need easy access to, especially on the airport, close to me. This strategy is a rough guideline and of course, you can and should adjust it in the way it suits you best. Bear in mind though that in the most places you'd be going to, you can always buy something you're missing, but you probably wouldn't leave abroad something that turned out to be useless. Bottom line is that you take stuff you're sure about and also it's much better to do a laundry every once in a while, even in a sink with some soap, than to pack a full outfit for every day. But again, whatever suits you best is what you should decide for. I hope this guideline did answer your questions about one bag traveling and now you'll be able to pack accordingly to your needs. Cheers, safe travels and do zobaczenia.